Call everybody to order. Everybody, please rise. Thank you. Dear God, today as the session opens, we pray that your presence will be before us and everyone who serves in this decision-making process of our city. We pray for direction which will lead our city to be strong and unified. May we continue the legacy of our founders. May we be granted this day the wisdom to make decisions which will be for the good of our city. We also pray for your special blessings on all those who are working to transform our city and make it a better place to live and work. Amen. We'll now do the pledge. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. Councilor Noon. Here. Mayor Samaras. Here. Councilor Cirillo. Councilor Conway. Here. Councilor Elliott. Here. Councilor Kennedy. Here. Councilor Leahy. Here. Councilor Mercia. Here. Councilor Milanazzo. Here. Eight present. Any moments of silence? Councilor Leahy. Thank you. I'd like to offer a moment of silence for Gary L. Martin, owner of Thurman Prince. Gary Martin of Lowell died peacefully September 5th at Lowell General Hospital after a brief, brief illness and with his loving family by his side at age 78. He was, a devoted hus he was the devoted husband of Bev A. Bede Martin, who they shared 59 years of marriage with. Uh, born in Norfolk, Nebraska, <coughs> February 25th, 1941, he was the son of the late Ross and Gladys Riggs Martin. Gary received his early education in the Elgin school system and was a graduate of the Elgin, Nebraska public high school system, class of 1959. Gary married Bev, his high school sweetheart, on October 28, 1960, when they settled in Elgin and began raising a family. In 1955, while still a, f a freshman in high school, Mr. Martin began his printing career with the Elgin Review. After graduation, he worked at the Omaha World Herald until 1973. When he and Bev moved to Pepperell, he worked at Sullivan Brothers until 1975. When he and Bev, and then after that, he and Bev opened up Thurman Prince on Tanner Street in Lowell, which continues to operate today. Gary cared deeply about the city of Lowell and its residents. He enjoyed talking with the customers at his shop and especially about the low politics. Big fan of the Patriots, Gary loved watching the GOAT, Tom Brady, lead the team to six Super Bowl wins. He enjoyed collecting and displaying Lionel trains, cheering his Nebraska Cornhuskers football team to victory, and most of all, spending time with his four cherished grandkids. In addition to his wife, he is survived by his two sons, Shannon Martin and his wife, Mary, Kaylin Martin and his wife Karen, four grandchildren, Shannon Jr., Brendan, Michelle, Travis Martin, and a sister Phyllis Lang with her husband Wayne, a loyal, his loyal friend, his St. Bernard dog, and the business namesake Thurman uh, died in 1993. And um, Gary and Bev were 
great friends of almost all of us here. And uh, Gary V. missed. And uh, Bev continues with the business today. And we uh, probably a lot of us are still in there. So thank you. Thank you. Please duck in the chambers. Thank you. Uh, on the mayor's business, uh, we had a previous motion to uh, only you uh, go to this if there was a full compliment. We don't have that tonight, so that will be put aside. Next, we have acceptance of the city clerk's minutes, minutes of the Cannabis Control Subcommittee of September 5th, city Mr. council Mr. meeting of September 10th. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Can we go back to the selection of the auditor? All right. Um, Question. Well, we've been without an auditor for quite some time, and I understand um, that we're waiting for Council Cirillo to come. But uh, we've got to get an auditor. And uh, in order to do so, uh, it seems that we'll have to go out to advertise again. So uh, I know we have some concerns. Um, I think the candidate was suitable and qualified. However, um, there doesn't seem like there is a majority of counselors that are willing to do that. So I, I think that we should proceed with advertising um, a third time. Second. We're, 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 I agree. Second. I, I second it and I also agree that if it looks like there's not gonna be any wiggle room until Council Cirillo comes back, we need to just move forward, so. Okay, thank you, Council Kennedy. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, in, in my view, this motion's out of order. The, the City Council voted unanimously, all, all eight members, um, two weeks ago, not to take this matter up again until there was a full compliment. So I don't know why, um, I'm not sure why it's on the, well, I can understand why it's on the agenda, it's because nobody knew that Council Cirillo wasn't gonna be here. But given that she isn't, it would be out of order to take this motion up now, given the motion that passed unanimously just at the last City Council meeting. I need a ruling from the clerk. I think that, can I speak on this, Mr. Mr. Mayor? Sorry. That, that, that Council Kenny, that's utterly ridiculous. The intent was to wait for Council Cirillo, right. as you made the motion, in order to have a majority in order to put it back out to advertisement. I'm not willing to wait another couple of weeks for a political measure in order to move this forward. It's on the agenda discussion of selection of a city auditor. It's not out of order. We need an auditor. So that's why I made the motion and it was seconded. Request a roll call. No, I understand. I'm just asking the clerk for a ruling. Yes. Mr. Mayor, the last time we met, we took a vote. It, there, were, there were an even number of city councilors here, eight. It was four to four, it killed the issue. We decided, well, I didn't decide, but someone decided that we should wait for the councilor that's missing and come back. That would have broke the tide either way, and I'm sure it would have been to advertise again. So seeing that there's a delay here, my colleague, Councilor Elliott, said, let's you know, forget that and let's just vote to open it up again. What is the problem? It, it, that's what's going to happen anyway, so why not do that? I support opening it up okay. again. I understand it, but I'm just asking the ruling from the city clerk. I'm not sure what you look for the ruling. If you, the facts are stated as they are. Actually, any council can put a motion on the floor the second and we'll roll call. Right, roll call. Uh, Councilor Milanazzo. Uh, th thank you, um, Mr. Mayor. I also, I'll support uh, the motion, but I just wanted to share with my colleagues under the heading of transparency that I did receive uh, an email from the candidate that decided to withdraw, Kara McSwiggan, and I forwarded that to uh, Mary Callery. Um, she indicated in her email to me that she, um, because of family concerns, that she ended up doing what she did but if it does get reposted, she's going to be a candidate again. Um, so I'm just offering that as information. I haven't talked to Mary Callery. Um, I haven't talked to Karen McSwiggan, but I just wanted to make sure my colleagues knew that because we may not have to go out and pay 
for another um, advertisement if we decide we want to contact, have Mary Callery contact uh, Ms. McSwiggan. That's entirely up to um, the council if they wanted to go in that direction, or like I said, I'll support putting it back out. But she did, and I don't know why she sent it to me, and I didn't respond to it. I forwarded it to the city uh, personnel director. Um, but just to let you know that. Mr. Kennedy. Mr. Mayor, what is the motion on the floor? The motion, the motion was made by Councilor Elliott to um, resubmit, repost the uh, position of the city auditor second by and, uh, and, and that's for, what for how long a time would we be doing that? How long are we posting it for? Well, I'll say two weeks, Councillor, but you'll say three, so mm -hmm. let's, let's say two weeks. <clears throat> I got a chance too. Uh, Councillor Noon. Mr. Mayor, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, um, I support uh, the motion as well, uh, but I also, like um, Councillor Malnazo, I too received email from uh, the um, candidate that would draw because of family concerned, Kara. Um, so um, I would second, you know, uh, when that time come, may not be now, uh, Councillor Malnazo, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, suggestion um, that is uh, to save uh, taxpayer money that we one time offered to her because of family situation, she withdrew. Um, now she expressed interest in that she will be able to, um, you know, to take this job. If that's the case, then we may not need to uh, post that. But for now, I do support the motion. Well, I, I had talked to Mary, Ms. Callery, uh, and that they, we had received that information. But the, the roll call now vote for whether we should put it out. And let's, let, let's have it. Council Moon. Yes. Mayor Samaras. Yes. Council Cirillo. Council Conway. Yes. Council Elliott. Yes. Council Kennedy. Yes. Council Leahy. Yes. Council Mercier. Yes. Council Milanazzi. Yes. Eight yeas. And the posting is going to be for two weeks. Three weeks. Challenge. Two weeks. Okay. Ms. Callery, are you all set? Yes. I'll be posted for two weeks. Okay. Is there any other information you need from the council? Um, no, the only thing I just want to double check on, do you still want it in the Boston Globe? That's going to cost money. I mean, what's your, I would I mean, say no. what's your opinion as to, I mean, the merits of the Boston Globe as compared to going to the various organizations that, where these auditors are members? When you advertise in the MMA, that goes out just about everywhere. I, I don't, I think the Boston Globe is... It's a financial burden, first of all, and then second of all, I think, you know, you with the MMA, you get what you you the know value you're paying is for. In the membership in the MMA. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Is that agreement with? Um, I, I Mr. Would, Mayor, when you say post it in two weeks, so you're going to post it right away for two weeks? Is that it? Yes. Okay. Sure. Good. Bypass the Boston Globe. Hey, Mr. Mayor, I, I would say put it in the globe. If we're going to redo it, we may as well redo it the same way we did it the first time. I mean, it's not all that much money to have an ad in the globe. Um, Let's just take a It just on seems it. that it makes the net as wide as can be. Jesus. All right. We'll have a roll call on I, 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 no, I just, I wasn't sure what the cost was. I think it was $2,000. It was closer to three. Or three. Yeah. Let's just take a roll call on the roll globe. Roll call. To advertise in the Boston Globe. Council Noon? Huh? Oh, sorry. Oh, Council Noon? No. Mayor Samaras? No. Council Cirillo? Council Conway? No. Council Elliott? No. Council Kennedy? Yes. Council Leahy? No. Council Mercier? Certainly not. Council Milanazzo? No. You all set? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next, we have, uh, by Council Sura, request the City Manager of the Proper Department to provide City Council with a report as to how we're protecting the city government computer system. Uh, that's a motion by Council Cirillo. I'd like a motion to move this to the October 1st meeting by Councilor uh, Elliott, second by Councilor Conway. N next, we have order to vacate, discontinue, and abandon portions of Eaton Street. 
waive the full reading. I need a motion to adopt. So moved. By Councilor Mercia, second by Councilor Milanazzo. Any questions? Roll call. Councilor Noon. Yes. Mayor Samaras. Yes. Councilor Cirillo. Councilor Conway. Yes. Councilor Relia. Yes. Councilor Kennedy. Yes. Councilor Leahy. Yes. Councilor Mercia. Yes. Councilor Milanazzo. Yes. Eight yeas. Next, 4.3, order vacate discontinued abandoned portion of Montreal Street. We have the full reading. Need a motion to adopt. So moved. By Councilor Conway, second Thank by you. Councilor Elliott. Roll call. Councilor Noon. Yes. Mayor Samaras. Yes. Councilor Cirillo. Councilor Conway. Yes. Councilor Elliott. Yes. Councilor Kennedy. Yes. Councilor Leahy. Yes. Councilor Mercia. Yes. Councilor Milanazzo. Yes. Eight yeas. It's not 7 o'clock yet for the uh, in public hearing. Communication from the city manager. Motion response to Barber Street and La Plume Avenue. I believe we have a motion to uh, withdraw. Madam yes. Manager. To, to postpone the response. Postpone. To postpone till next week. Ma Mr. Mayor. Can you make that in the form of a motion? Yes, I will. Thank you. Uh, I make a motion to delay this vote for one week. Now, if you know and That would also include the order for the 60-day trial, 8.1? Yes, just that one off of the 60-day trial, Mr. Mayor, if we could just take that one off, because it's probably time-sensitive for the other issues to get done. So I'm just referring to this one. Any Thank you. Second. Any second by Councilor Conway. Thank you. Next, efficient city operations, uh, Council Leahy. Um, sorry, I just need a minute to pull it up. Um, well, I guess I just, after reading this, I guess I just want to know where we thought we were through the manager, you know, how, how's it going with the reorganization? Uh, in terms of moving the departments, um, so uh, the, the uh, career center or mass hire has condensed their space. We did a new lease for them. We then put it out to bid um, pertaining to the health department and consolidating the health department with recreation as well. Uh, that process is, we're, we're waiting for that lease to be finalized. There was one bidder, uh, and it actually is the space that Mass Hire had vacated over at 107 Merrimack Street. Um, and then it's anticipated um, once that move takes place, which is likely around January 1st or so, um, that we anticipate moving fire protection um, as well as the training, uh, fire training to Pine Street, to the health department. Um, as you know, uh, the Mammoth Road property has been a major issue and challenge, um, certainly for fire protection in there. Uh, the conditions of the building are, are um, very poor. And so they would, they, as well as uh, the uh, training uh, that's right now on Rogers Street, there's enough space for them both to occupy Pine Street. And it's a good location for them to have people who are looking for permits and, and the like to come. And then we would explore surplusing those other two properties, um, 60, six, I think it's 600 Roger Street and um, Mammoth Road. But hmm. not at this point. Obviously, they're still in there. Okay. It, is that, it, I, I don't think. I, I apologize. So recreation would move with the health department because under that reorganization a few years back, Recreation was consolidated, was part of the health department, and then we would anticipate moving case uh, back into City Hall, um, into the recreation space. Um, that would do two things. Um, people coming for permits or parade and so forth would be coming to City Hall rather than planning and development, and it also frees up space for the police department over in the JFK Center that they need for expansion. Sure, thank you. What, I, I haven't been part of this. What happens with um, the old firehouses? They, what, what's a general? The, what we would explore is um, this, it, the city council, if it desired to surplus it, and we put would sell it. Um, we could either auction or we could put it out for bid. But selling the property would have to have appraisals done and the like. But uh, initial look at both properties. It looks like there would 
uh, very likely be commercial interest in both of those properties. And so um, that, that's something that we would explore going forward and bring it to the council. Okay. All right. That's not residential on um, Rogers Street that's considered commercial because of the firehouse? I, I, that that portion would be considered uh, commercial. Is it? Okay. All right. No, thank you for this. This has been sort of a work in progress for a long time. I appreciate all the effort, and uh, it would be good to get everybody reorganized and moved around. It's and and for the that. health department, having a central downtown location on a bus route, as well as with parking, is something that they are looking forward to, especially their public health nurses. They'll be open the same evening hours that we are, so that people can uh, go, and whether it has to do with shots or clinics and the like. So um, it, we think that this, this will work out well. <laughs> Oh, and also the substance abuse coordinator in, in, in uh, clinic there. Sure. All right. Thank you. I appreciate all the effort. Thank you. Okay. Next, we have information report, election system panel flyer. Madam Manager. Yeah, thank you. Um, so this is a notice and that we're, we put out on October 7th. We will be having a uh, panel uh, discussion, a presentation at the Senior Center from 6 to 8 p.m. This is to discuss and present the two options that will be on the ballot on November 5th. Um, this is in connection with the voting rights case. And the two options that the council had already narrowed this down to, one being ranked choice voting, the other a hybrid system of eight uh, district and three at large uh, system. Um, that evening, uh, we certainly are going to continue to present on LTC, and we've worked with them, the presentations and the information, as well as on our website, Your Lowell, Your Vote. But that evening, we are, have um, the services of an expert who will moderate a panel. The panel um, it, it, it will contain uh, four people. One, uh, someone from the city of Cambridge who has ranked choice voting, someone I believe from the city of Worcester who has hybrid uh, system, and then advocate, one advocate for one, one advocate for the other. The idea is to have discussion and questions answered um, and examples given. So that will be from six to eight. Uh, it will be televised. Uh, at LTC, um, it, it will be televised live, and they will also replay uh, that during the month or prior up to November 5th. Uh, and um, we just want to make everybody aware that that will be happening. So if you can come to the Senior Center, great. If you can't, you will be able to watch it on TV. Any questions? I, I th that's all. That's good. Um, all good stuff, Madam Manager. Is there has there been any um, thought on sending out a uh, uh, not a questionnaire, but a sort of a a, a mailer, a, a mailer um, similar that the that Secretary of State does right. for the state. We have been talking about that and looking into it. I mean, in terms of the cost. So there's three ballot questions, um, the two connecting to the voting rights case, as well as the CPA, the um, uh, Act, the adopting the uh, Community Preservation Act. Um, the, so we're, we are looking into that. Uh, they would have to be translated into the four languages, and so that would is another consideration in terms of the cost. Uh, what we are trying to determine is there a way of getting information to every registered voter so that we can direct them to where they can find information online or where they can call to get information. So we are we're working on that. There is no real budget. We, we're trying to get a handle on what the cost would be if we household those mailers. So we have 59,000 um, voters uh, currently in the city of Lowell. If we household so that one notice goes to each uh, family or household that might bring down the cost. So that is something that we are looking so at. So is there any reason why we couldn't go to the plaintiffs, considering they wanted the change and two options were presented and approved by them that they could share in the cost of educating the very people who there was a desire to, you know, to help and change. But it's just a suggestion. It's probably a non-starter. I don't yeah. know. But if they really did care about um, the process and educating people, they'd be willing to make sure that everybody was informed, which is essentially 
what's behind this whole lawsuit. Yeah, and we're, we're trying to figure out how to best reach everybody, you know, right. uh, obviously, you know, with website, with Twitter, with, with the um, LTC, and LTC also, we've met with them. They are going to uh, replay the presentation um, by our expert. They're, they're uh, cutting the presentation, taking out the two systems that were not chosen right. and repackaging that. They're also going to put together a presentation that was given here to the council uh, when the law department made a presentation and give us a schedule of when these are going to be playing so we can post that on the website, your, low, your vote, so people will know. Sure. They can look and say, all right, I want to see that. I didn't see it on LTC. When is it going to play? And so we've asked LTC to give us that, you know, okay. between now and November 5th. And then the question of, you know, trying to do a mailer, as you point out, the Secretary of State, whenever there are statewide ballot initiatives, will send out a pamphlet on the yeah. questions and, and kind of give you information on the pros and the cons or, or at least an explanation of what it is so that you're not walking into a voting booth and seeing these questions for the first time. That's the whole point. We want people to familiarize themselves at least with the questions and if they have any questions. And so it's, it really is a cost situation. Right. And so we're, we're, we're trying to get a handle on the yeah. prices. Yeah, no, I, I, I know costs, are, as you mentioned, there is no budget and I don't want to belabor the issue. I just happen to think when I go and vote, I grab it wherever I go. And I understand right. there's a lot more ballot questions, but it does give you the pros and the cons in simplified manner. And I think it's very helpful, but right. cost is always a, a concern. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sir. Thank you, Madam Manager. Uh Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Madam Manager, I know that this is not going to be the only educational section that we will provide to the public, uh, but I do urge that, you know, the, especially this, um, the first one, the October 7 at the Senior Center, um, that um, your office uh, do you at best to reach out to every organization, every partner possible to get a great turnout here because it's important that we uh, do educate our community about uh, these uh, two options uh, before, so that they well educated before they get to the poll. Uh, so thank you for um, you know uh, put this out, and uh, I, I hope that um, you know we get a great turnout uh, October seven. And, and we already have started reaching out with that to all the neighborhood groups, all of the community groups, and partners. Every everyone that we know of, and we'll send it out again in advance. Um, one other thing that was done, and this was um, when the uh, Lowell Public Schools had a back to school event out here on the plaza, uh, Elliot Veloso and people from the election office set up a table at the event uh, with information about the ballot questions and the voting rights case. And a lot of people came to the table to get information and took information. So it was something that uh, Elliot, uh, I believe, had had thought would be a good thing to do since these were parents of public school children and um, it was a big, uh, a, a great hit. So uh, we're looking into doing some of those other types of things, going to where people from the city, whether it's a farmer's market or what have you, and having a, a, an information table um, for people as well. So we're looking at every angle we can to reach the public. Right. Right. Leahy. Uh, thank you, quick question. Do we know if it's gonna go in the Lowell Sun, I mean, I suppose we could ask, but I, I don't think we've heard anything from about a, um, a voter's guide this year. Usually we answer questions by now, so is there a voter guide coming out? Or do you know of? We, we can inquire. Because right, sometimes they have the voter guide and then they'll put the ballot questions. Yeah. So we should find out. We'll, 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 we'll uh, inquire. Okay, thanks. That's a good suggestion. Okay, fine. Any other further discussion? Madam Manager, DLS cover memo. Yeah, this is um, just an update to the council. This matter had been before the council, the Department of Labor concerning uh, some of the repair works that had to be done and our responses we had previously filed with the council. I just wanted to make the council aware that the matter has been reviewed and there's a final closeout letter from DLS satisfied with um, the efforts and the uh, programs now in place for um, maintenance and uh, upkeep of, of our systems as well as the plan on a go forward. I need a motion to accept and place and file the communication from so the city manager by Councilor Newman, second by Councilor Milanazzo. Uh, we're now gonna go back to the utility public hearing 5.1, National Grid, Verizon, New England, request relocation 
of J.O. Poles on Vanham Avenue and Old Ferry Road. Open the hearing for anyone speaking in favor. Yes. Good evening, Council. Uh, my name is Paul Pellegrini, and I'm an uh, engineer with National Grid uh, in the Merrimack Valley out of North Andover. And I come to you uh, for this request uh, to move two to, uh, poles at the intersection of Old Ferry and Varnum to support the new construction of the rotary uh, that's going to be built for the market basket and, uh, on uh, Old Ferry Road. Okay. Any questions? No. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else? Thank you. Okay. Anyone else speaking in, wants to speak in favor? In favor? That portion is closed. Anyone who wants to speak in opposition? In opposition? Opposition? That portion is closed. I need a motion to refer to the Wire Inspector Report and Recommendation by Councilor uh, Mercier, seconded by Councilor Conway. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Yes. I hate to bring this up, but since we have people here from National Grid, I find a hazard that could possibly happen, and I think I'd just like to, a UPS truck came into where I work and asked me if I could address this issue regarding National Grid. At 877 Andover Street, there's an electrical pole that's going across from one pole to another, and in between that pole is a hunk of tree. And if that ever f rotted and fell out and some person was walking down the sidewalk, if you could check that out for me, please. I'll, I'll give it to the uh, forestry department. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well said. All right. Thank you. Next, we go to uh, communications appointment of Stephanie Call to Lowell Cultural Council. I need a motion to accept the place in the file. So moved. By Councilor Noon, second by Councilor Conway. N then we have a communication reappoint Richard Lockhart to the Planning Board. I need a motion to adopt. So moved. By Councilor Mercia, yes. second by Councilor Leahy. Roll Excuse call. Oh. I apologize. Uh, Stephanie Call is here. Um, if I, I did want to recognize. Okay. I'm sorry. I apologize for not letting you know that. Actually, I was a little excited. I didn't have to say anything, but I do want to um, thank everyone, uh, the city manager and city council, for the opportunity to, to serve on the cultural council. And I look forward to getting to know the city a little bit more. I'm a newer resident of Lowell and uh, potentially working with many of you in the future. So thank you. Thank you for your willing to work, willingness to work. Thank you. Uh, then we have, again, a communication reappoint Richard Lockhart to the planning board. Any motion to adopt? You got it. I got it. Okay. No. Council Noon. Yes. Ms. Samaras. Yes. Council Cirillo. Council Conway. Yes. Council Elliott. Yes. Council Kennedy. Yes. Council Leahy. Yes. Council Mercia. Yes. Council Milanazzo. Yes. Eight yes. Next, we have communication city manager request out of state travel for two members of the Lowell Police Department. We need a motion to adopt. So moved. By uh, Council Noon, second by Council Conway. Uh, roll call. Council Noon. Yes. Mayor Samaras. Yes. Council Cirillo. Council Conway. Yes. Council Rally. Yes. Council Kennedy. Yes. Council Leahy. Yes. Council Mercia. Yes. Council Milanazzo. Yes. Eight yes. I'd like a motion to bundle 7 1 through 7 3. So moved. Moved. Yes. By Councilor Conway, second by Councilor Elliott. Vote uh, 7 1 is to vote to accept a gift of 7500 from Digital Federal Credit Union to Fire Department. 7-2 is vote to accept gift of coffee brewer from the Friends of Lowell Council on the Aging of the Council of Aging. And 7.3, vote to accept the gift of scale from the Greater Lowell Health Alliance for use by the Council on Aging. So I need a motion to adopt. So move. Okay, by Council Elliott, second by Council Mercia. Roll call. Council Noon. Yes. Council Amir Samaras. Yes. Council Cirillo. Council Conway. Yes. Council Elliott. Yes. Council Kennedy. Yes. Council Leahy. Yes. Council Mercia. Yes. Council Milanazzo. Yes. That's eight yes. Next, we have 7.14. Vote to authorize City Council approve amendment to the consent degree. Waive the full reading, second reading by title. <coughs> authorize the City Council approve 
an amendment to the consent decree which includes a residency requirement for any election system that involves districts. A motion to adopt by Councillor Elliott, second by Councillor Mercia. Um, can I? Councilor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, on August, in the meeting of August 27th, when we were choosing before September 3rd to finalize two um, options for the uh, non-binding uh, on the ballot in November, I did point out the fact that we did not have uh, a consent decree that outlined um, district representation and that you had to live in a certain district. And I suggested that people should at least be living there in that district for a year. I firmly believe that, and I want to thank our solicitor for bringing this, our, our assistant city solicitor for bringing this very important issue up because I think it's only the right thing to do to be living in your district that you're going to represent. So this is a very good motion, and thank you for taking my suggestion. Thank you. Okay, roll call. Councilor Noon. Yes. Mr. Maris. Yes. Councilor Cirillo. Councilor Conway. Yes. Councilor Elliott. Yes. Councilor Kennedy. Yes. Councilor Leahy. Yes. Councilor Mercia. Yes. Councilor Milanazzo. Yes. Eight yes. Okay, then 7.5 <coughs> vote place non binding ballot question of 11.5.19 municipal election ballot. We have the full reading and second reading by title. The Lowell City Council places the November the non binding ballot question on the November 5th. 2019 municipal election ballot pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 53, Section 18A, and Chapter 54, Section 42C. Any motion to adopt? Okay. Councilor Milanazzo, second. Second. Vote. Councilor Noon, any questions? Roll call. Councilor Noon. Yes. Mayor Samaras. Yes. Councilor Cirillo. Council Conway. Yes. Councilor Elliott. Yes. Councilor Kennedy. Yes. Councilor Leahy. Yes. Council Mercia. Yes. Councilor Milanazzo. Yes. Eight years. I'd like a motion to bundle uh, 7.6 and 7.7 .7 by Council Conway, second by Council Mercia. Vote to transfer 110,000 to cover easement and right of way acquisition for two mass DOT project in engineering. And also vote to transfer 45,000 to fund maintenance contract for new capital equipment, police department. Waive the full reading, second reading by title. It's been done. Roll call. Council Noon. Yes. Mayor Samaras. Yes. Uh, Council Cirillo, Council Conway. Yes. Council Elliott. Yes. Council Kennedy. Yes. Council Leahy. Yes. Council Mercia. Yes. Council Milanazzo. Yes. Eight days. Okay. 8.1 has been withdrawn. 8.2, order vacate, discontinue, and abandon portion of no, Mr. Sorry. Mayor. Yes. Yes. Um, just a portion of 8.1 um, was going to be um, taken uh, out. In, yes. In post that's right. That's right. Mr. Mayor, Barbara Terrace, La Plume Avenue, and uh, Barbara Street, that's going to be taken out of that 60-day uh, trial. Everything else stays in because that's time sensitive and I don't want to. Okay. So, so I make a motion that we separate the uh, La Plume area from the rest of the 60-day uh, trial. Day trial. Have that on next week. And put the, uh, what I, I'm taking off, put it on next week. Thank you, well, the motion Madam was, Manager. We, we did do that. Okay. Right. Yes. We're going to do a roll call of the order as amended. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Section 266-45 will be on a later time? Yeah, next okay. week. Next week. Thank you. I'll say to Councilor Elliott. Okay. Need a motion. Right. Motion. Motion for the, motion to what? Motion for the amended order. And uh, uh, motion amended for order. the amended order. Sure. Okay. Second. I thought we did that. Okay. Councilor Mercia, second by Councilor Elliott. Roll call. Roll call. Council Noon. Yes. Mayor Samaras. Yes. Council Cirillo. Council Conway. Yes. Council Elliott. Yes. Council Kennedy. Yes. Council Leahy. Yes. Council Mercia. Yes. Council Thank Milanazzo. You. Yes. Eight days. Okay. <coughs> now we go to 8.2. Uh, order to vacate, dis discontinue, and abandon portion of Father Morris at Boulevard. We need a motion to refer to a public hearing on October 1st, 2019 at 7 p.m. So moved. Okay, Council Noon. Second by Council Conway. Thank you. All right, next, we have a report of subcommittee, uh, September 2019, rules subcommittee. Sarah. 
presentation. Councillor Elliott. That would be me. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So um, the rules subcommittee met uh, last week in attendance, Council Mercier, Council Conway, and myself. Uh, there were two items that were discussed and referred to that subcommittee. One was quite some time ago, and that was a motion relative to um, setting up, uh, it was in response to the protest that took place in the city council chamber. Uh, also present was assistant city solicitor, uh, Rachel Brown, who was uh, filling in for city solicitor uh, O'Connor. Um, the meeting, um, the, the first issue uh, came up was uh, the, the, the protest that took place in the city council chamber, and we referred it to the city solicitor. Um, if I could, Mr. Mayor, could I just get uh, a, a report from uh, the solicitor because the motion that came out of the uh, city council rule subcommittee was to request the solicitor to come up with a recommendation on both um, a policy on, I, I'm sorry, um, Mr. O'Connor, uh, Mr. Baldwin, could, could you put that? I can't see um, the solicitor. So the motion was to refer to you to come back with a, a policy to the city council. Are, are we in the process of that or not? Is that forthcoming? Because this has been before the rural subcommittee and we have been anticipating, uh, anticipating that. And, and the issue was a, a reasonable opportunity to speak. Um, you know, should there be a space or not a space? Um, the discussion at a council meeting has to be um, germane to the issue. Uh, of course, we have a rule 26 is, is five minutes. So um, there was a lot of discussion, but we want to make sure there was certainly freedom of speech, freedom of expression, but we need to have rules to allow uh, the governing body to conduct business. So with that, um, there was issues of placards in the city council chamber. We also requested that you look at other governing bodies to see exactly, um, you know, if, if signs are allowed in the chamber. Um, so I'll stop there and then I'll finish because the follow-up point was there was a sense of the, of the subcommittee that we don't um, allow for a location where people can protest, but rather that it, it not be allowed in the city council chamber or the or the city hall, or the hall right here in city hall. So that was a lot, but to you, Madam Solicitor, that policy will be forthcoming? It will be forthcoming. Draft. Uh, we had, draft policy will be forthcoming. Uh, we had initially, uh, when first looking at these issues, had reached out to some other communities, and um, um, we'll continue to, to do that, but we anticipate having a, um, a response for you for the uh, for the upcoming, uh, upcoming meeting. Okay, so that, that was the only motion. I don't think it needs them to be followed through uh, just to have that policy forthcoming uh, to, to put something in place to allow, to prevent that protest from happening again. Um, I don't know if members of the subcommittee want to say anything further on that. Uh, the second motion was from Council Lee and Council Conway to put, um, to allow the motions, city council motions, be placed at the beginning of the agenda. Uh, if I recall, there was no action taking taken on that uh, that motion. I don't know if members of the council want to want to jump in, but we understand the intent is that more often than not, these motions come from members of the public, and uh, sometimes our meetings go to great length. And um, the council of Mercia mentioned that. The, the way that we conduct taking these motions are out of, or, uh, out of order and uh, at the appropriate time. So uh, there was no action taken on that particular motion. Any further That's a report of progress, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Thank you. I need a motion to accept this as a report of progress by Some Council moved. Mercia, second by Council Leahy. Uh, question? Yes. So um, I guess question to the chair. So what do you mean by no action? Just Nobody wanted well, the, to do the anything. motion was to put it forward, and there was no there was there was no motion or second to make uh, to allow for city council motions to be put at the beginning of the agenda, which is what was referred to that little subcommittee. Rather than if there was something urgent um, and people residents were waiting, um, that we take it out of order and we we take it at the beginning of the meeting. 
All right. I mean, we were thinking the intent of our motion was to have motion responses, then motions, and then we'd go to city business. But um, I will say that that was discussed. I did. I do think that makes some sense that there are motions and then motion responses that are that follow each other, but uh, not that. But there wasn't a desire in the subcommittee. I'll speak for myself to put city council motions before um, orders of the day or votes of the city manager or things of that nature. We just felt that that, per that business is is more urgent, and then motions will come later. Okay. Thank you. All set. All right. Thank you. Uh, we go, go to petitions. The first one: claim property damage. I need a motion to refer to a lot of so move. Report and recommendation. So moved. By Councillor Noon, second by Councillor uh, Leahy. Yeah. All right. That, what I'd like to do is bundle 10.2 through 10.6. Need a motion to uh, bundle by Councillor Fowley, second by Councillor Milanazzo. 10.2 is Jermaine Amagwilta uh, for the benefit of Marilyn Figueroa, request installation of a handicapped parking sign at 56 Butterfield Street. Then Valerie Kine requests installation of a handicapped parking sign at 2 Lewis Street from its current location across the street. Um, Michael Califano requests City Council review traffic safety at the corner of Moore and Wooden Streets. Richard Gallison requests installation of stop sign at a River Place on Auxiliary Road. And Nilo Kuna Minas Lunch Corporation requests installation of customer only parking sign at 191 Apple Street. So I need a motion to refer all of these to the transportation engineer for report and recommendation by Councilor Conway, second by Councilor Noon. We go into uh, motions. First motion by Councilor Noon. I need a second uh, is city manager schedule a minimum of three educational sessions regarding the two election choice options that will appear on November 2019 ballot. I need a second. By Councilor Milanazzo. Councilor Noon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I thanks uh, Madam Managers already took first initiative already to have this first session already in October uh, 7 uh, at the Senior Center. Um, the, um, the motion come out of a need to provide as much educational session possible to the public, um, whether that be uh, the one that's coming up in uh, October uh, 7 or maybe another one subsequent. It does not need to be three, uh, but if we can do three, that'd be great. Uh, I also uh, happy to hear as well uh, from the manager, um, Madam Manager, is that um, the LTC will replay uh, any of this presentation uh, to the public. So um, I'm happy with that. Okay, thank you. Next, by Councilor Noon, request City Manager have City Solicitor work with the appropriate parties to amend the consent degree requiring the district candidates reside it's in the districts for which they the, run. The, Second? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the motion is moved uh, because yeah. city solicitor actually took the initiative to take that happen, make that happen. Thank you. Next, by council, no request city council specify the vote counting methods to be used with the at-large ranked choice option. Need a second. This by any second. Motion fails. Wait, wait a minute. I'll, I'll second the motion. Okay. Uh, but the, no, the, the, the idea here is that I, I'm not sure if there's any uh, different counting method. If, if say, the voter um, were to vote in November um, and supporting the at-large rank choice, and the, the council then, you know, vote to endorse that, um, that uh, we uh, either we uh, go with the Cambridge model or, you know, it, it, is that the only one or is there any different way of counting. So I, I'm not clear myself on that, but I just want to make sure that whichever that, that we go with the Cambridge, if, 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 if the council, I mean, if the, uh, the, the, the voter vote to support the at-large rank choice, that we go with the Cambridge model, and that's it. Councilor Kenny. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I think this is a really good motion by, by Councilor Noon. You know, without getting into it, because it does get a little too complicated, probably more complicated than we want to get this evening, but um, there are different ways of counting the votes with that method. And so you can either start qualifying people from the top or eliminating people from the bottom. And 
I think it would be good to know whether or not it makes a difference right. and what that difference is. And, and I think that that's information that people need to have um, in, if they're going to make an educated decision on which system they like in November. Any further discussion? Thank you. Oh, Mr. Mayor, I, I, I think it makes sense to find out what the counting method is. I just don't know what we're talking about here. I don't know exactly what the methods are. Is the motion um, to the maker of the motion to have the city manager come back to the council with options, and then we're going to vote? I, I, I would uh, refer to the uh, solicitor. I, I believe, as I'm understanding it, we would get the information. We would go to our experts, get the information um, regarding not just the Cambridge system, but if there are other methods, bring that back to the council so that we can have some specificity. Ed. Madam Solicitor, is there anything else you want to add? Yes, whatever, whatever uh, method would be used, um, it would be, I mean, from our standpoint, it will be done uh, via the, the voting machines. However, uh, the council would be fully apprised of it, and uh, if there are any questions or objections or uh, wanted to look at it in another way, uh, we certainly could. Okay, so well, we're, we we're not going to specify. I mean, I, I, I guess I understand your point. I was just confused. What, what are we going to? We're not specifying tonight. We're just requesting the city manager to come back. I think we back. need to get the information. Okay, right, good. And um, I'll, I support that then. Right. Further discussion? Thank you. Thank you. Council, next, by Councilor Newman, request city manager named Henry Marchand, the city magician. Need a second? He disappeared. <laughs> by Councilor. <laughs> <laughs> it, no, no, it's, 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 it sounds like, no, it's, it's, no, it may, it may seem like a silly motion, uh, but, you know, I know that uh, over the year, Henry has been performing, at a, you know, the mere Christmas holiday, entertaining those children and their family, and he's the only person who do it and, 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 and did it well at the city hall, so, I mean, maybe up him up there that started so that maybe he can book all this, you know, high-end performer. You know, so, hey, no. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, I think it's a great motion, but the fact remains that I asked Henry, being the great magician that he is, to do something to the budget and make it appear like we have more money, and he couldn't do it. Yeah. So what is wrong with this? But it's a good motion. That is a problem. He's Counselor. the best. He's the best. <laughs> if we could only do that. <laughs> okay. Next, we have a motion by Councilor Kennedy, request city manager, I resume the practice of providing city council with a quali quarter quarterly report regarding the status of the city council. I second it. Second by Councilor Noon. And Mr. Councilor Mayor, Kennedy. the motion speaks for itself. Okay, so. thank you. Next, by Councilor Kennedy. Mr. Mayor, yes. Um, if there's no objection to the making of the motion. Can we un could we get a count? Um, I think it makes sense to get a quarterly report on where we're at, but I guess by virtue of the motion, will we get a list of all the motions that have been filed and the status of it? I'd like to know how many have been filed in the last two years, just out of curiosity, how much time it's taken to respond. Sure, we, we have Thank everything you. in an Excel spreadsheet, so we can certainly pull out whatever numbers you want so we could get the total count. Thank you. Okay. Next, another motion by Council Kennedy. Request City Manager instruct the Lowell Police Department to enforce traffic restrictions on Second. Merrill Drive, by, second by Councilor Noon. Councilor Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is motion is, uh, I, I place this motion on the agenda by request. Um, I'm just amazed at the amount of uh, time that we've spent on Merrill Drive. However, um, there are continuing problems up there, and I think one of the, one, there are three problems. One problem that, that occurs on Merrill Drive is speeding. I think that people that are trying to escape the, the intersection of Boylston Street and, and Rogers Street and that, that take Merrill Drive are, are, are traveling excessively on Merrill Drive and then continuing at an excessive speed on Fairmont. Um, I think that's, that's one issue. Um, the, the second issue is that traffic, it's, it's really just a, a one-way st street. It's only a single-lane street, yet um, traffic is traveling both ways. Um, on Merrill Drive. And then the third uh, issue is buses and commercial vehicles, even though they're not supposed to be using that route, continue to do that, use that route. So I think that really what needs to be done is that um, 
we need to, to request that the police department put a, um, probably a police cruiser at the top of the street and do some enforcement for a few weeks so that people stop doing that. Um, and it, you know, this is a, a sleepy street or was a sleepy street up until some of that construction or the traffic congestion started along Rogers Street and now all of a sudden it's become um, an ongoing issue for the people that live up there. And uh, given that they, they are also speeding on Fairmont Street, it's an issue that uh, instead of being contained and, and curtailed is, is expanding to include um, other areas of the neighborhood. Thank you. Uh, next motion uh, by myself. Uh, I've had a number of requests coming into the mayor's office. Request the city manager provide a report on the impact of triple E virus in the Lowell area and the responses by the city to any threats posed by the mosquito borne illness. Second. Second by Councilman Moon. Madam Manager, I know you have a. Thank you, um, Mr. Mayor. Given um, the obviously heightened um, concern regarding triple E, um, our Director of Health, Karen Vigoro, is here, and she did prepare a, a bulletin and status, which we will also post on the website. Answering the questions, I think, uh, as you point out, um, people are concerned, where is Lowell in terms of the Triple E? And uh, so everybody should have this, and, and perhaps it's best if the health director can give us an update as to the uh, current status. Good evening. Um, so as you're all aware across the Commonwealth, Tripoli this year has um, become an issue for many of the communities. Um, Lowell had a positive test result of a mosquito trap um, on middle of August, August 14th. And in response to that, um, we worked with our contractor, the Central uh, mosquito control project, Massachusetts control project, and we identified what streets around that trap needed an extra treatment, and over the space of four days, that um, area in the south of Lowell received two spray treatments. Um, at this point, the, the state is still designating Lowell as a low-risk community because we only did have that one uh, mosquito trap that had a positive. We haven't had any further positives come up. Uh, we have 20 different traps throughout the city that are tested, uh, collected and tested every week, beginning at the beginning of summer, and it goes through mid-October. Actually, we just wait for like two or three really hard frosts that happen overnight. So when you wake up in the morning and there's frost on the ground, that's enough to kill the mosquito population. And that's when we stop our trapping and testing um, that is happening. When we did do the uh, spraying, we immediately put out press releases. We put together some slides for Facebook and the website. Um, LTC helped us share the information, so just so that uh, people in the community would know that spraying was happening, um, and if they had any questions, they could contact us. Uh, if um, all throughout the summer and fall, if homeowners are interested in having their property inspected to see if it's appropriate to have additional spraying on their property, they can contact our vendor as well, our contractor. Um, at www.cmmcp.org. It'll be on the website too, so if you need to look that up. Um, it's not every mosquito that is a public health hazard. They're a nuisance, no one enjoys getting bit by mosquitoes, but, they don't, but not all mosquitoes carry diseases. And so what would happen is the vendor would come out and they would see what types of mosquitoes are around that person's property and determine if it is a human biting type of mosquito or if it's a bird biting mosquito, um, if it's the type of mosquito that actually transmits either Tripoli, e, which is Eastern Equine Encephalitis or West Nile virus. Um, and if, if it, those types of mosquitoes are found, then the vendor would actually treat the property. Is there a cost, um, a cost to that? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. A cost to that? 
Um, to the city is seventy-four thousand dollars. No, well, to the to, to the homeowner that would call. No cost to the homeowner. It's part of the contract to protect the city. Okay, very good. Thank you, yeah. Councilor Kennedy. Yeah, thank you. Where was the positive trap? It was in the south of Lowell, around the cemetery area. And what was it positive for? Was it Triple E? Triple E. It was. And that was the first positive we've had of Triple E in the city. Um, in 2015 and 2018, we had also a positive mosquito, but that was for West Nile virus. Okay. And so when it's positive, is that just one bug? Is that no, so they call it a mosquito pool, but it's not actually a pool of water. It's all of the mosquitoes that are collected in one trap over a week, and then they take those mosquitoes, test, grind them up, test them, and that's okay. one positive. Okay. So there could be hundreds of mosquitoes in that one test. They all have the virus. No, you wouldn't know that. Well, that's, that's what I'm asking. Mm -hmm. How many bugs had the virus? Just one? You wouldn't know that, no. Because a trap, no. So what, no, they take all of the mosquitoes from one trap, yeah. grind them up, and put them into a, a solution and draw it out to see if it's a hit for a virus. But it's the only one that has happened this year in Lowell, that one trap, one time. Okay. Again, 20 traps throughout the city when every week that? are being tested. When did that happen? Um, August 14th. Thank you. Also, um, so I know we joined, joined a number of years ago. Um, 2012. 2012, yes, I remember filing the motion. So is that, is South Lowell, does that get more attention, more attention with the spraying application than other sections of the city? It gets more prep attention, so a lot of checking the catch basins and making sure those are cleaned out so there is less standing water um, that mosquitoes like to breed in. Um, so th they would focus more around that. But again, it is around the cemetery area, so right. that just has a, a biology that supports mosquito breeding rather than some of the other urban areas of the city. Okay, but it does get, South Wall does get sprayed, correct? Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, we, we joined this project. It's, Tell it's me where, there's a treatment where, that happens. Where in the city does, does that application take place? So throughout the spring and the early summer, there's treatment that's happening, and that's a hand application. So, it is, so I kind of stopped before I said spraying because it's not really a, a truck mount that's spraying into the air. It's actual going to the locations that are the catch basins or marshy areas and they're placing lava side in those areas to kill the mosquito larva. So they're trying to knock down the population before they even start to fly. So that's when I, so that's the treatment that's really happening to knock down the population of the mosquitoes. Once they do spraying, that's what happens at this time of the season when mosquitoes are out, they're flying, they're adults, and so then you might have those trucks spraying that we put, that we put in the press release. I see, and are we doing that? We are doing that, we did that around the area when we had the positive okay. test, Great. yes. Thank you. Twice. Twice. Okay. Thank you, thank you for that information. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Manager. Uh, we now go to announcements, the city clerk. Uh, just, just a note of clarification that public hearing on the um, abandonment item 8.2 is going to be October 8th. October 8th for the public hearing on that. Okay. Any other announcements? I just want to mention this past weekend, the city was bustling, seemed from one corner to the next with the, with this, with the sculpture and the electric vehicles and just it was a good weekend for the city with so many events going on, and they were all very well attended, all the ones that I went to. So I thought, thought that was a good thing. Good, good weekend. Okay. Any further announcements? Councilor Noon? I just want to also acknowledge as well, in addition to all the uh, kinetic raisins, all that, the uh, low police have done a remarkable job in terms of their annual volleyball at the uh, Roberto Clemente Park, uh, led by uh, Officers uh, John Bucellus and retired officer Phil Conroy, as well as a number of uh, young ladies who volunteers provide food. And of course, the, um, 
the uh, superior officers giving some funding to for food, for T-shirt, and so on. And so many other player was was there. So it was an awesome event. Uh, this is part of community policing, right? Uh, so what you do is you build trust, mutual trust, respect between the officers and uh, the people that you know, they come in contact with, the residents. So it was a great event. And those are something that, you know, uh, the, the resident or, and, uh, and the people don't really hear about it as often. They should, which is, I mean, I, I, I said to the, uh, the mayor uh, that day, I said, look, you should put on the, the mayor agenda so that bring uh, those uh, and who, those who are involved uh, uh, to come and just recognize for their good service. And I'm sure they're going to do the same thing next year and maybe next year bigger and better. Thank you. Yeah, he's correct. We plan to do it because, I mean, it, it was an outstanding amount, number of people there and was very well attended and useful. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The greatest thing that happened this week, and I know everybody can agree, is the new senior C citizen senior center bus. Connor Baldwin, thank you so much for finding the money at the direction of our city manager. The people at the Senior Center are so pleased and thrilled. Thank you to my colleagues for supporting this. This is very good, and I'm a happy person. Thank you so much. And what will your first trip be, Counselor? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where, but I'm happy. Thank you. Need a motion to adjourn? Councilor Noon, second by Councilor Kennedy. Thank you.